and I'm the Program Director of Culinary Arts and Food Science at Drexel University. I teach on the food science side, and today I'm going to show you how to do something that's relatively simple and easy to do at home, and we're going to make yogurt. All you need is about two quarts of milk. I like to use whole milk, but you can do it with a lower fat version, as well as an already made yogurt that has live active cultures, and that's key. Today I'm going to use a Faya 2% because I like the taste of it, so it's just that simple. First thing we're going to do is heat our milk up to about 180 degrees. We do that because we want to denature the whey proteins. These are water-soluble proteins like lactoglobulins that, when denatured, do a really nice dance, if you will, with the casein proteins and give you a nice, smooth protein complex which gives you a nice, smooth, rich, creamy yogurt, which is what I think we all want. So we heat it up to 180 degrees and we use a thermometer to make sure that we're at that temperature for about five minutes to make sure that we have it denatured properly. Now we're gonna take that out and the next step is really important. We're gonna cool the milk down to about 105 to 110 degrees. And we're gonna do that because that's the temperature at which these live active cultures really like to live. So we take the ther thermometer again and we bring it down to 105 to 110 degrees. You can expedite this process by putting this pot in a hot in an ice water bath. It'll go a lot faster, but you don't want it to be too cold either. So let's just assume that it is at 105 degrees. I'm going to move it back over here just so it's a little bit out of the way. And what we're going to do is we are going to take a bowl and we're going to add, oh, about, I don't know, three or four tablespoons of the warm milk to our little bowl. And we're doing that because we're going to temper the yogurt. And we're tempering the yogurt. That means we're going to take about oh, two to three tablespoons of our yogurt and add it to this warm milk mixture and we're gonna smooth it. We do this because we want the temperature of the yogurt to equal the temperature of the milk. And we're also gonna mix it up gently. We're not gonna do it, we're not gonna be too rough on the yogurt cultures. So we're gonna mix it up so that it's a nice smooth, creamy, silky, it's really nice and glossy too, a nice mass. And then once we have that all done, we're going to simply add it back into our pot. I'm gonna save that bowl. And we're gonna switch to a whisk and we're just gonna very gently work in the yogurt cultures smoothly, slowly, and with care. And just a quick mix till it's smooth. Then we're gonna put a lid on this and we're gonna set it aside for six to 12 hours. We do that depending on how tangy and how thick you like your yogurt. So put a lid on it, leave it at ambient temperature. You can also put it in your oven if you have a proofer setting, that works really well. And if you leave it in the oven without it turned on with the pilot light or the light on, that usually is nice and warm enough for the cultures to grow as well. So we're gonna put a lid on it and leave it for several hours and you're gonna end up with a really nice yogurt that I'm gonna show you here. I did this one yesterday so that we would have it all ready to go. And as you can see, it was a nice, smooth, silky, shiny, creamy yogurt. You can add cream to this to make it even more rich, but I don't really find that that's necessary. This was about a seven hour yogurt. And if you leave it in longer, it's gonna get take on a bit of a tang and it's gonna get thicker. If you want Greek style yogurt, all you have to do is take this and drain it in a sieve with cheesecloth. And you'll, after a few hours, you'll have a really nice, thick, almost spreadable yogurt. So sometimes when you take the lid off, you'll see a layer of water that looks a little bit greenish, yellowish. That's a good thing. That's whey, it's water soluble, and it has a lot of riboflavin in it. So that's why it is that color. And you can drain that off and save it and use it in other applications like 
marinades, you can make lemonade with it, you can add a touch to your pasta water, you can do all kinds of good things with the whey liquid that comes off. Or you can just mix it in and have a nice, really almost pourable yogurt. So I'm gonna show you what I do with mine. I'm going to take some of the yogurt and just spoon it into a bowl or a mug or whatever vessel you really like to use. That's entirely up to you. I happen to have some strawberries. If you have frozen fruit, that works really nicely. If you have jam or if you have jelly, that works the same. And if you don't have anything, that's all right too. This is delicious by itself. I love walnuts, so we almost always have walnuts in our freezer. I keep them in there because they last a little bit longer. And then I'm just gonna add that on. And next, I was lucky enough to have a lemon. So I'm just gonna take, <clears throat> let me move this a bit. I'm just gonna take some lemon zest and grate it right into my nice little yogurt bowl. It gives a nice color, it gives a nice zest, and that really essential lemony zing and flavor. And you have this really nice and tasty bowl of yogurt that you can have for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or snack. What are some other things that you can do with the yogurt? You can make dressings out of it. You can add a little bit of olive oil, maybe some roasted garlic and some other seasonings that you like You make a dressing out of it. You can add some lemon, some grated cucumber, some dill, some garlic, that's pretty traditional. Or you can use it in marinades, you can use it to make pancakes, waffles. Uh, there's lots of things you can do with homemade yogurt. So thanks for watching and happy spring turn everybody.